Welcome, welcome. Today I am going to be showing you how I like to assemble a stocking, a Christmas stocking. And this is a really simple method that involves piping on the top, which is optional, and a little loop to hang your stocking. Um, you can use any stocking pattern and apply any, any stocking shape and apply the same technique. I am using a pre-printed stocking that comes from the Nicholas, it's a fabric panel that comes from the Nicholas collection by Jay Wecker Frisch for Riley Blake Designs. So that stocking shape is already cut out and that panel comes with four stocking fronts. And then you, you create, you add your own back and your own lining. So for the back fabric, I am using one eighth inch um, gingham, black gingham from Riley Blake Designs. I think this black gingham just goes with almost everything. I use it all the time. And then for the lining, I'm also using that gingham. I'm using a velvet rickrack for my little loop and black piping. And then you also need a interfacing and I used, let's see, I used um, SF 101 and this is a woven fusible interfacing and I use it all the time. I love it. I also made two of my stockings with a fusible fleece and so I'm going to compare the difference on those and, and I'll show you that at the end. But for this stocking I am going to be putting one together where I used the woven interfacing. So let's get started. Okay, so I have already assembled the outer pieces and all that entails is um, I fused the SF-101 interfacing onto each side of the front and back. Then I stitched along the outside, leaving the top open. And I clipped all of the curves, which means you clip with scissors close to the stitching, but not over the stitching. So on the inside curves and the outside curves. And what this does is when you turn it inside out, it, it'll let you have a nice smooth finish and it won't get all bunched up is the best way to say that. So that outside part is done. And we're gonna go ahead and sew together the lining pieces and start assembling the entire stocking. Okay, so I have my uh, two lining pieces and they are cut out and I'm just going to take them and place them right sides together and we'll put these together the exact same way that I put together the outside pieces. So I just line them up. Uh, oh sorry not exactly the same there is one small change which you will see. So I'm going to line them up and I'm going to sew them together with one quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, you'll notice here I backstitched and cut the thread there and I'm going to leave an opening so that we can turn this all right side out. So I'm going to start stitching again right about here. I like to think of this as um, making a stocking is almost the same as making a tote bag. Um, almost the exact same construction. The lining, um, leaving a hole for turning right side out. It's so similar. So if you've ever made a tote bag, this is the same thing almost. And don't mind all the paint on my hands and varnish. I have been painting a lot lately, lately and the paints just don't want to wash off very easily. Okay, and I'm even going to get this little little curve right here just to be safe. I just want it to have a nice stocking shape 
and if those curves are not clipped they'll want to um, when you turn it right side out they'll want to buckle in the opposite direction so this just gives movement and allows those curves to take their shape Okay, so now I'm just going to turn this right side out and I'm going to leave the outside of the stocking facing wrong side out. Now before we put these together, I'm going to add the piping and this is optional, but I will show you how I do that and we'll add our little hanging tab. Again, that's optional if you don't want to have your the option of hanging your stocking, then you don't need that. So I'm going to do this, the um, circumference of the stocking opening plus a little extra. Okay. So I'm going to start and end my piping on the back. And I'm going to there's on this, this is store-bought piping, and you'll see there's one side. It's just a little bit nicer looking than the other. Here you can see this kind of clear thread that's in a loopy shape. I want this to be facing the back, the inside of the stocking, just in case anything shows. And I want this nicer side to um, face the outside. So I'm going to face the nicer side, right sides facing the right side of the, of the fabric. And the messy side is kind of, it's facing up. And I'm going to start um, about um, two to three inches in from the end. And let me see where I put my clips right here. I'm gonna clip this into place because I forgot to change my presser foot. So I definitely wanna do that. And I'm going to change mine to a zipper foot. If you have a piping foot, that would be great. But the zipper foot works fine for me. So here we go, quick change. And then I am just going to stitch right over the stitching that's on the piping. And when I get to these edges, I'm going to finger press the seams open so that they lie flat. And we're just going to go all the way around and here we go. Okay, and I'm going to stop, I'm going to stitch a few more stitches and then I'm going to leave about a three to four inch opening here. So if you've never sewn piping in before, notice I have the raw edge of the piping lining up with the raw edge, with the edge of my fabric. And so your piping is actually on the facing downward, which can be a little odd if you've never done this before. but when you turn it right side out, it will look like that. So I left this opening and I am going to do, as I did a previous uh, YouTube video showing this technique, but I will show it again. I am going to do a, um, I'm gonna join my piping with a diagonal fold and it makes it just look like one continuous piece. So I'm gonna overlap these two pieces about three inches and cut and then I'm going to take my seam ripper and come back here and unpick back to close to where my stitching ended close to here all right let's see
get all those threads. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want this little piece of cording, the white cording on the inside, to match up with this cording. So that they look like one continuous piece of cording. So now you can see if I let this go under and they overlap, they can just meet up right there. However, I am going to just fold this like so, so I have this angle. And then I'm going to encase the cording inside of that fold. So let me just make sure it's nice and neat. This is where you just fuss with it just to get it nice and tight. You don't want it to be loose. And now it's overlapped and I'm going to start back stitching just back a little further and then come over the whole thing. So it's nice and secure. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut off that extra piece of fabric. There's my washing machine. <laughs> All right. And then there you can see that's done. So next I am going to sew on my little loop and I'm going to cut about three inches. You don't have to be exact. Just enough to create a little loop like that. And what I want to do is attach it to the back part of my stocking. So I'm just going to open this up. And actually, I'm going to cut that a little bit bigger. Let's go four inches. Okay. And then I'm just going to tack that into place, still using, still using my zipper foot. Okay, so that's in place and notice my loop is facing to the inside of the stocking as well. So I've just got this little um, bit up here in the seam allowance area. Now I'm going to take my lining and again, my lining, don't forget it has that hole for turning it right side out. And we're just going to put it right inside. And I'm going to match up. I'm going to match up these um, outer edges of the lining and the outside stocking. So take your time with this. And again, I want to finger press these side seams open. This just helps reduce the bulk that's come accumulating on those seams, especially the back seam that has both piping and um, the loop. And so I start by matching up the seams and it is tricky. You've got a lot of fabric squeezed into one little space. So it's not hard, but it's just, you've just got to manipulate the fabric and take your time so that you don't end up with puckers. So now I'm matching up that front seam there on the front of the stocking and then my edges. Now because this stocking, that lining fabric is on the inside, you might end up with some bunching or you can just take it really slow and try to just kind of gently pull on the fabric to manipulate it. And I'm always going to start on the back just because, you know, if there's any mistakes, I'd rather they be on the back. So here we go. Now I'm putting down the um, presser foot and I can just feel, oops, I want my scissors. Let me show you. Right here, 
I can feel the bump where that piping is and you just want your presser foot right up against that bump. So um, this part, I just want to say don't be afraid of this part. You can't see that piping but you can definitely feel it and it would be very difficult to sew up over it but take your time and just be careful. And we're just going to sew all around the same way as when we installed the piping. And kind of use your fingers to guide so that you can feel where that piping is. And when you get up to that um, side that has the ribbon or whatever you use to create that loop um, and the piping and, and all that bulk, take your time and slowly guide the presser foot over that. Don't try to rush this part. I'm gently, gently pulling from the back to help guide this over. Okay. Okay, so I've got a little bit of excess fabric right here, so I'm going to pull what I can, but I might get a little pinch of fabric. Yep, I just did. And it's really okay because it is the lining. Okay, so that's all sewn on, and now we're going to pull the lining out, and then we're going to find that opening. So my opening is right here and I'm going to reach in and I'm going to grab the toe of that outside piece and pull it through the hole carefully. I don't want to rip, I don't want to rip the sides of the opening at all. And then you're going to also pull that lining right side out. So now we've got everything right side out. See if we can get this. Let me grab a tool. Let's see. All right, I, I like to use this um, tool that is really a turning tool, but it's perfect for poking out those curves. There we go. Okay. And before I put the lining back in, I'm going to either hand or machine stitch the opening closed. And if you've watched my videos, you know I'm going to machine stitch it because no one's going to see that. Now at this point you could take off your zipper foot, but I'm just going to leave mine on. Ah, this is probably why you take off your zipper foot, but I just went off the fabric. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. So I'm just, whoops. Oh, get all those threads off. Y'all, I am so clumsy. If I can do this, anyone can do this. Let me tell you. All right. And then we just tuck that lining right inside. And this is another opportunity to kind of push out those curves. Get your hand already all the way into the toe and just get it all situated the way it should be. And there you have it. So next thing I would do is take this to the iron and press it so it's nice and neat. And I just want you to notice these curves. If we had not clipped them, 
they would be pulling that direction, just the opposite direction. So this is really fun. Here's this one, and here is the one that has been pressed. So you can see the difference, but they look awesome. So I'm gonna make, go ahead and put together the ones with the fleece um, interfacing, and then I'll show you all four of them. Okay, these are all finished, and I wanted to show you the difference. I really love how all of them turned out. These two were made with the fusible fleece interfacing, and they do give the stockings a more pillowy, um, thick feeling. They just have a more substantial feeling. Um, that's the only difference. They were equally as easy to sew together. There, um, I did find that I had to be more careful in my one fourth inch seam allowance as um, with all of that fleece, it tended to go off a little bit. And this one, you can see, well, at least to my eye, it looks like it came out just a little smaller as I tried to compensate for that. But yeah, these look awesome. The artistry on these fabric is just gorgeous. Like look at that St. Nicholas. That is just the coolest thing. I love it. So, and then the difference is these ones were made with the um, SF 101, the woven interface facing, and they still have a nice structure to them. It doesn't just feel like a floppy piece of fabric. Um, I don't like stockings just to feel flimsy and these do not feel flimsy. I would feel more than comfortable filling this with just as much goodies as this more pillowy one. And I don't know if you can see the difference even as I'm holding it. This just has a little more structure to it. And let me hold it up this way. It's really hard to tell them apart. Um, this just has a, it's, I would say this is more crisp and thin, but still a nice amount of structure. You're not losing anything by using the SF 101 for sure. But if you like a more pillowy, um, a little bit more bulk to it, um, soft, bulky, uh, stocking, then go for the fusible fleece. So it just depends on what you're going for and what you prefer but they are all gorgeous. I am just blown away by Janet's artwork on all of these stockings. And, um, you know, the artwork is so special that as long as you take your time, I, I recommend adding a beautiful piping detail and just any little detail. You could even do some um, hand stitching, maybe some embroidery to accent these, but make them personalized and, and just, put them together um, with care and you will have something that will be a keepsake and be used for years and years to come. So I hope you enjoyed this um, sewing along a stocking with me. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and take a moment to like and subscribe. Thank you so much and have a great day.